Hey guys, it's Pat Crane, and we have got a great show for you today as Convert to Rate presents a special report, uh, a full-length interview with Sloot from Serenity. So we'll be talking all about, well, all the things Legion, for sure. Uh, but first, it's a Battle.net news break, starting right now. It's time for the Battle.net news break. And joining me for this Battle.net news break is uh, John Horseman. You know him from Well Met and the Payload podcast over at blizzpro.com. Hello, John. Hey, Pat. I know we promised we wouldn't talk about this, but you have no idea how long it took us to talk about how we were going to do that intro. I know. It, it, it took it, way it, too long. It took, it took way too long. <laughs> and we've already we're eaten like, into the time that we've allotted for this Battle.net news break, so... <laughs> yep, we yeah it's, like, yeah, it's it's been an adventure, folks. It's brunch time it, it is, right now, and I'm hungry. It I'm is, hangry. It is brunch. He is hangry, so we'll make this fairly quick, and then we'll move on to actually. It's a really good uh, interview with Sleuth that I had yesterday. Uh, we talked about uh, you know the mythic race. We talked about mythic raids in general. Uh, there was he was involved with the Grand Collegiate. Dungeon Race, which was a uh, smallish uh, esports try with five man dungeons uh, and mm. a lot more. We we'll talk all about Legion and and everything and about what he's up to and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, John, what have you been up to, buddy? What's what's going on in your world right now? Uh, quite a bit. I hit rank five in Hearthstone, so that feels great. Hey, awesome! Um, nice work. Yeah. Nice work. Uh, Half the season left to make the grind to legend, and I haven't played a whole lot the first, so it's just it's been a nice, stable grind. So that's been great. I'm a hundred points away from diamond on Overwatch, so awesome. That's good as well. So you know, just play playing the games, playing a lot of the games. Yes, yes. I've been playing a lot with uh, my druid in in World of Warcraft. I got up to uh to one ten like a week ago, I'm already at eye level 830-ish. So wow. I'm doing pretty good, and I might be able to uh, sneak it into raid at some point and uh, check out Resto Druid. So that'll be yeah. good time. That'll be good times. Uh, but let's move on to the news. All right. Uh, first up, last week, uh, Ian Hazakostas held a Q and A on Twitch, uh, covered up the secondary stat squish, the reasons for some of the big class changes that are happening in uh, seven one five legendaries. He covered artifact power, catch up mechanics, and a lot more. Uh, John, was there anything that you wanted to bring up here? Because there was there was kind of a lot, and he did talk about shadow priests, I believe, and and warlocks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I. It, it was so there There was a few things that I kind of took away from it. Uh, the one thing I heard is regarding the stat changes and stuff. I just heard don't panic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, right. Like, calm the F down for a second and mm -hmm. just relax. And he did a much thorough, more thorough job of kind of explaining uh, the reasoning behind it and how it's going to work. But a lot of it, too, like there's a few times he's like, Guys, the math is kind of tough, but it works. Just trust us. It works. The math works out. So we'll have to see if Ian's a liar or not. So we've got that going for us. <laughs> right. And um, and there are some big uh, class changes as well, and they're ongoing on the PTR. So, I mean, it's it's really tough to, to nail it down and say, okay, we're done, and this is exactly what's happening. So, I mean, they're iterating, right? right? This is what they do. So. Right. And yeah. And what did he call it? He said the ripples, the the ripples from the Legion expansion are still like settling and they're addressing those ripples from the big change that they made when Legion hit. So, right. Right. you know, it, it's something that just kind of has to happen. There was a lot of single singular spec talk. I had to be very careful with how I pronounce that because <laughs> that was that right. was going somewhere. Right. Um and, and 
I thought that was interesting. And they did kind of a post Q&A feedback thread and people were like, uh, that was great for the one question I got for my spec or my class, but it just felt like there was a lot. And they're like, yep, we don't think we'll probably do that in the future regarding yeah. singular specs unless they're it, big changes. It's tough. That, you know, affect yeah. beyond the, the the spec. Right. And it's it's really tough because when you do that and we found that out when we were doing uh you know, different how to, you know, resto shaman or whatever. Early on in the show, we found that we were cutting out, you know, one, we were only talking to one 34th of the audience, right? Now right. it's one 34th. Yep. So it's really tough to uh, be able to break that out and, and say, oh, everybody needs to listen to this when in, in fact what it is is no, really it's only these guys over here, this very small group, uh, and maybe that should be done differently somehow. So there's, there's a lot of action going on in the, in the forums right now and on, on, uh, Twitter and, and all that kind of stuff too. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot going on in the, in the community just in general, right. With all these changes, it's something that we're not really used to seeing, you know, when right. they announced the the patch schedule at BlizzCon, they were talking about, let's talk about what our smaller patches are going to look like. Let's talk about what our larger patches are going to look like. And then 7.1.5 <laughs> is a is a it's a BFD it's a, patch. It's, it's, a it's a pretty BFD. it's a pretty meaty patch, uh, especially yeah. with all the class changes. And and uh, Sloot talked about it a little bit in our interview yesterday, but uh, it was talking about uh, you know how could the blues, uh, all the devs not know uh, that this was going to happen at some point, that this was not a finished deal. How could they not foresee some of the class problems that they're having uh, now? Did they not have enough time? Did they, you know, so, I mean, there's some criticism uh, to be had there for sure. Uh, but there was there was a bunch of big switches for Legion, and now they're just having to having to clean it up. And we'll see what ends up happening. So. Yeah, have, I'm optimistic. Have, have hope, optimistic. everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be okay overall. Overall, uh, let's move into Hearthstone. Well met. Yes. There we go. Uh, and there was something new that popped in this week, right, John? Pat, you want to take this inside? <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to take this inside, Pat? That oh, I want to take this inside. Yes, I want to take this inside, John. I want to <laughs> take this inside. So. <laughs> Hearthstone launched an amazingly awful ad campaign. I mean, <laughs> they're going for cringy. I, I, I'm sure of it. Yeah. But it, it is it is a cringy. It's, uh, do you want to take this inside, bro? Right. You know, kind of. And, you right. know, it's these two guys was, in the office kind of fighting. And then it was just kind of one of those of sudden, awkward uh, type of TV commercials. So, yeah. Yeah, it was it was very awkward. But it's the silly. guy like transforms into Sylvanas with a little Nerf bow and arrow, right. and just it's, it was right. It was just it was, it was so just goofy. Bad. It was just goofy. And it is so bad. Right, it is, it is. so bad. It is. But at least we have the Hearthstone Murloc Christmas Carol album now on YouTube, so uh, we at least have that That's going nice. for us. Yeah, it's nice. nice. It's a little Hearthstone scene. So you've got the Yule log and then it's Murloc singing Christmas carols. And after every song, a Murloc scurries past and drops something by the hearth. And by the end of the hour, the whole hearth is decorated for Winter Vale. Cool. So very cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. All right. Uh, but it's a slow week in Hearthstone because they just did the release of the big expansion. So, of course, we're not really expecting a heck of a lot right now yeah um, there's not going to be really anything probably for probably i bet you until after holidays we yeah, don't right. really hear anything else right it is it is the holiday season tis the season and all uh so let's move on to heroes of the storm let's jail. let's do uh we have a brawl with the blues coming up next week thursday december 15th at 11 a.m pacific time to uh watch a few matches with ragnaros He's now he's going to be live next week, so there. Mm. Uh, and there's going to be let's see, MF Pally time is going to be there. Trixler, Michael Udall, uh, and a bunch of other folks. So go there, watch the stream, and at the end, if you stick around, uh, you'll get a chance to join in. Of course, I'm I'm sure that uh, 
nobody will show up for the stream. So you'll have a great likelihood of being picked, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody's gonna watch that. Not with one Trixler, of few. MF Pally yeah, Time, and Michael Udall. No, that's not. Nobody's gonna show up for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, there is a Wintervale event uh, that's happening. Not only can you get a special snowflake portrait, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did. I just yeah. That the way yeah. Right. I, I feel great. Right. Everyone wants to be a special snowflake, and now you can. Now you can. Uh, they also uh, thanks to this mass-produced snowflake mount. Right, and you can get permanent access to the festive treasure goblin mount just by yeah, finishing that... twenty-five games. So yeah. Well, it's you gotta do work, what, Pat. John. You gotta do the fifteen for the uh, for the for Oni the new... Genji skin. Yep. Right. So you gotta do that anyway, and if you do thirty, you're gonna be. Uh, I don't know what what's the thirty. I can't remember all the all the things you get for that stuff. So you get a bunch of free heroes. And yeah. Then in Overwatch, you get some player portraits. I have to do it because that ends that Overwatch. Um, uh, maybe event I'm, ends. I think uh, January first or January third, like I think. very beginning of January. So, yeah. yep. I got to do that. <sighs> Me too, buddy. I was hoping we we're gonna have a drinking and swearing there so that I could justify the well maybe we'll jumping have to into heroes maybe we'll have to figure something out maybe after this right. uh, news break or whatever we'll do fair we'll enough do that. all right let's move on to overwatch yeah dipstick mm -hmm. uh what's going on johnny uh we should later today know specifically what's going on with the overwatch holiday stuff coming up so Ooh. um we we do have an event scheduled for today uh, there was an invitation that was handed out last week by the quote unquote invitation. It was a GIF sent out by the play overwatch, uh, Twitter. And so we're going to find out more. Presumably it's going to be like events in the past where you'll have skins and, uh, other cosmetic items, sprays, uh, player portraits, that you can collect as you level up in Overwatch. I'm really excited for Santa Torbjorn. Right. I think that's going to be amazing. And we'll, and and so we'll, we'll see some new skins. I mean, this is kind of like the the Halloween thing that was around. It's kind of like the uh, right. the, Lucy, the Lucio Ball. I, I really want them yep. to bring that back as a, like a full-time deal that I can play. I just, yeah, you and your I soccer game. games, Pat. It's so weird. I love that. Love and I love Rocket soccer. League. I, you know, it's just like yeah. weird soccer, though. It's not like normal soccer. No, not normal, <laughs> helpful, healthy soccer. Like, let me play it in a video right. game first. Right. right. Oh, speaking of soccer, uh, big happy birthday to uh, Darius. Uh, hey. It was his birthday, yeah! and uh, this this last week. And his, birthday, so and, his, and his soccer team won the championship chip. So, you know, he's champion he, cheap champion <laughs> cheap. Uh, so he's yeah. off celebrating somewhere. So that's all good. Um, let's move on. Since we were talking about sports, let's also move on to esports. Uh, I can dig that. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't you talk about Overwatch first since we were just there, John? Yeah, definitely. So we've got two fairly major tournaments coming up this week. We've got IEM Overwatch and MLG uh, Vegas coming up this weekend. IEM is, well, they're both the 16th through the 18th. Uh, IEM is going to be at twitch.tv slash ESL underscore Overwatch. And MLG Vegas will be at MLG.tv if you're wanting to catch those live uh big names like huge names in all of them basically if it's a name in overwatch they're going to be playing in one of these two tournaments so pretty cool. exciting stuff very very cool and i know that in heroes of the storm the heroes global championship qualifiers north america number three uh was this last weekend and we had i love these team names i love them i know nothing about them though uh chew ate my hot doge and dumpster tier superstars love those names, <laughs> but they join the rank ranks of like Gale, Gale Force Esports, Neventic, uh, Denial Esports, Astral Authority, and and others. So there we go. Uh, that is the esports roundup. Anything else that we're missing? No, I, I'll I, see you. I'll I, see you in Holiday Overwatch Land, though. There we go. Uh, 
And I think that's going to be it. So I'm going to play the music here. Uh, and we're going to get out of here. But thanks, John, for uh, for joining me today for totally. this little news break. And now we'll move on to the giant interview with Sloot from Serenity. It's really a lot of fun. I think you guys are going to like it. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is weird. I just saw on MMO Champion today that some of your teammates uh, did something kind of weird. They did a they did a plus twenty mythic Keystone Dungeon in time. That's right. Yep. Holy crap! Um, <laughs> yeah. What's gear co- and stuff helps? It's crazy. Yeah, imagine that gear and stuff. No way. Uh, so at Plus 20 Keystone Dungeon. Uh, wh- what kind of insanity is that? What are you facing at that point? Um, well, I mean, it's like three. They had fortified, so the, the trash was tougher. Mm-hmm. It was like in the, like because fortified is not balanced, right? It's it's uh, a different value of extra health and damage. It's like in the 300 to 400% range, something like that for like trash damage and health. And then, you know, the boss is accordingly. And so it gets, it gets kind of crazy. I mean, everything's pretty lethal. You have to play pretty perfect. And these are a group of five guys. It's, uh, it's four guys from Serenity and, and one of their tank friends from, uh, fat shark. Yes. And I mean, they've, they're like a team, you know, they've been playing together for a while. Sure. Um, so this is this is what they do, and they're like, "Hey, man." Um, I, I think a, a bit of it was they were kind of pressured. There was a group earlier in the week that had cleared a nineteen uh, and okay. failed a twenty, so they're like, "Oh no!" Like we have to have the title. So you know, they went they went <laughs> for it and got the good RNG because there is some RNG involved with what dungeon you get. You know, um, the group that did the nineteen, I'm getting, got a Notharian's Lair, which is, I mean, just ridiculously hard uh, with fortified because of those scorpions at the end. Um, oh, whereas yeah. these, whereas these guys got a dark heart thicket, which of course is tough. There's those bears, but not nearly on the same level as those scorpions and those pelters. Oh god, I hate those guys. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it was it was supposed to be world first, and then this morning we woke up to find out that apparently there's a Chinese group that had actually done this three days ago. <laughs> so oh really? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well so, that's all right. Is, so, so is there a lot? Right, of, is there a lot of in team competition between all the guys in Serenity? Not really, no, because a lot of the issue comes with, like, for me, for instance, yeah, I would love to compete. And I think there's a couple of guys in the guild like that, but some people just don't have the interest, don't have the time, don't have whatever. Because as far as efficiency of farming for your character goes with artifact power or gear or whatever, there's really not much point for people to do outside of a rank 7 to 9. Maybe push like a 10, 11 if you have a really good group that can carry a viewer or something, you know? Uh-huh. But, but there's just no point. So anything, plus you actually don't get anything after a rank 15 in terms of any tangible reward outside of, um, you know, glory and gloating and stuff like that. So there's sure. just no... For most people, there's just isn't a good reason to do it, and mm-hmm. or they don't have time. So honestly, they're actually the only group in Serenity that does anything, and it's not even a full group, as as we just said. Uh, the tanks right. from another build. Um, right. I was I was kind of wondering why they didn't tap you and say, "Hey, uh, we need a tank," and then you just go in there and just run that stuff because you've been running nothing but WoW essentially since Legion started, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, they already have an established group, right? Like these these yeah, mythic yeah. these mythic plus groups aren't. You don't have to run with your guild mates, right? It's not like that. Right. Um, they just happen to be four in a group. But I mean, some of the other groups I've heard of that, you know, do this stuff a lot and run top. I mean, have like two guys from one guild and one guy from another guild and one guy that doesn't even raid, you know, like it, it doesn't, you can kind of take something from everywhere. It's it's mutually exclusive from your raid team, essentially. Sure. Um, outside sure. of the fact that, you know, you might form some friendships, obviously within your guild. It's, it's more likely, but, you know, they've been running they've been running with their guys for months now so it'd be kind of weird just to be like let's boot the tank and yeah, get the yeah. Other guys. i was i was actually watching uh, a video of yours and it was when you were doing the uh, mount run at in kara right okay and you're doing the you're doing the speed run and all that kind of stuff and and i was watching that and i'm like going you know this looks so much like diablo like <laughs> the way you the way you tank like, and wow is is the way that I play Diablo and 
uh, obviously it's not the way that I heal because it's because I'm doing you know uh, I'm doing the whack a mole thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, it's just kind of crazy to to see that dungeons have come along to this level, really. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Like it, it looks like Diablo, or just how we pull, like just tons them off. It, right. I mean, it looks like it looks like your it, it looks like the way that I play Diablo, but it's obviously it's wow. I mean, it's it you know right. with all the different things and stuff like that. Obviously, it's wow, but it, but it feels like just the way that the dungeon runs feel right now. It it feels a lot more like Diablo, where you're pulling larger groups, you're getting all these things, lots of action, nonstop um type of excitement and yeah. i mean that's that just seems to it's kind of crazy to to see where dungeons have come to from you know back in the uh, i don't know icc days icc just, bc but i mean yeah ex- it's it's technically been like that for a while it's just that now they finally kind of slapped down a formula ironically with influence from diablo uh they've kind right. of slapped down a formula that there's repeatability of dungeons but even if you think about mop and warlords and whatever and even like right the the mythic uh not well it wasn't mythic plus then it was challenge modes um even then i mean it's all about speed and pulling as much as you can without wiping right and now there's just such an emphasis on speed clearing especially with not only making the timer but making different timers for different chest values or chest amounts yeah. right so yeah yeah i mean it, it has you know CCing something is a time loss until you get to something like you know a rank twenty or whatever potentially where you might actually need to CC because it just hits too like it'll kill you instantly. Right. Um, right. It's unlimited scaling, so eventually you will reach something you just can't beat. Right. Your gear just won't oh. allow for it, and that's why you see something like you know a couple months ago these same guys that did the rank twenty, um, you know, squeeze the rank fifteen. There was a few groups that did that, squeeze the rank fifteen, and now rank fifteen is an absolute joke. Right. So. It's mm-hmm. just about it's just about that gear again, but yeah, I mean, well, it, well let's just say rank fifteen is a joke for you guys. For me, like it's, mythic it's a is just a thing, slightly <laughs> less tough thing for some. Um, but yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. But either way, I mean, gear will eventually trump it, you know. And even sure. even like as you're saying for yourself, right? Nighthold's going to come out. Eye level is going to bump up. Everyone's going to have ten, fifteen, twenty more eye level, and then fifteen will be a joke eventually for you, you know? Yeah, right. Right. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, do you think that it was basically, I mean, because we've seen like the dungeon runs have become such a big thing. Is it because they finally were able to uh, put the rewards against it? Is that what has really sparked this thing? Or was it a combination of that well, plus the formula plus whatever? Yeah, I think it was everything. Because, I mean, we just talked about the the rank 20 with those guys and the different groups. And there are there's no right. reward there. There's no gold. There's no mm-hmm. gear. There's no, I mean, there's a bit of AP and a bit of gear. But not any right. more than you'd get at rank 12 right now, which is the cap, right? So there's really no point to do it outside of, again, you know, fame and glory. Um, <laughs> right. But, but, I mean, there's, that's, but that's there's, a, there, there's a real popularity there, uh, you know, no matter what kind of play style you really have. I mean, we're seeing this in uh, the Convert to Raid Guild, which has, you know, however many members in it. Everybody's like, hey, we're looking for, you know, so-and-so for, we're looking for a healer for a mythic, you know, for a plus five. Mm -hmm. Great. Whatever it is. And so then they're like, okay, great. Uh, We're always seeing the looking for groups, and it seems to be a big discussion point in the guild, and and it's just kind of like really taken hold uh in legion so it's kind of cool to see that something is kind of morphing out of you know the these small groups and stuff like that so yeah oh i mean it was it was just such a primary focus for them right i mean watcher like constantly was like you know we feel bad like dungeons are supposed to be awesome dungeons Mm -hmm. are supposed to be end game as well dungeons are supposed to be an alternate to raiding if you don't want to raid or care and then and i think they got it you know now i mean is it perfect yeah of course there's some kinks to work out maybe some of the modifiers aren't as fun as others or there could be sure. some more interesting modifiers but in terms of i think the the base idea the base formula of this ever increasing difficulty and you know relatively good reward to boot as you're doing it i mean it's it's obviously working right yeah yeah uh so in talking about the the mythic plus uh dungeon runs and stuff like that you were in uh sunny california last weekend and now you're back in cold wintry 
uh, Canada, right? We just had a ridiculous snowfall overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking out my window right now, and it's like two feet of snow. I know, and, and you're like, last weekend it was like 70. It was awesome. What? I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I was actually in Cali, and it was quite chilly. Like the. Oh really? I was in I was in BlizzCon a month at BlizzCon a month earlier. You know, shorts, yep. t-shirt, maybe sleeveless shirt, whatever. And I mean, yep. I, I'd be you'd be hard pressed to walk around in anything less than like jeans and uh, a, like a, a long sleeve and a sweater. I mean, it was quite chilly sometimes at night. Uh, needing that long sleeve shirt. That's really chilly. Oh, I mean, <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but no, but you were, you were a part of the great collegiate dungeon race. I was, which tell us about that and tell us what uh, you were doing. And cause you were hanging out with lore a lot. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, I think this is, uh, in a nutshell, blizzards stab or initial stab at, um, kind of, bringing a competitive pve scene well into the scene um yeah uh so i was kind of asked to go out there and uh co-host the the event or co-cast the event with uh with uh, josh with lore um mm-hmm. you know similar to just exactly how the arena events have well lore again at them and you know they'll have like ven or right. super keys you know so basically same idea uh, go there and kind of cast and then say what's up and call the shots and do that kind of stuff. Uh, and how was it overall? Um, which part of it? The, the cast. Well, I mean, just, was... just, well, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, the casting for you is probably, uh, uh, a new thing kind of, right. This was my first official time doing it. Yeah. But I think I got a, I think everybody got a little snippet of it when I was streaming at Gamescom and the the live race was on stage, but it was all pretty much done in German. Um, so I kind of <laughs> streamed the stage from Gamescom and shoutcasted the races themselves myself, and I guess I got pretty good feedback. Um, but I had a blast doing it myself, which is kind of good. really important to me, you know. So, um, so yeah, so I kind of threw my name in the hat, you know, talked to Watcher after, and for any if they ever consider these kinds of events, and and here we are. Nice. And so how was the event overall? I mean, how was the action? How are the I mean, because it was uh, was it four different teams for the for that weekend? Right. It was. Yeah. So it was the, the finals of the tournament. So they had 19 mm-hmm. teams overall um, mm-hmm. and we and the whole casting and, you know, event and everything was was basically the final. So it was two semifinals. And then, of course, two teams get eliminated down to the finals. Um, right. So it was, yep. Four become one. Um, and it was. um I mean, it was it, the structure is very similar to, and this is how. Well, it was with through Tespa again. You know the um, the Heroes of the Dorm with Hots. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, so it was the same idea. It was colleges, um, you know, competing for tuition money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was just college teams. It wasn't guilds. It wasn't top end guilds. It wasn't you know semi hardcore casual guilds. Whatever. It was just a bunch of college students that know each other, go to the same college, and play together. So yep. I think there was a bit of misconception from the community, you know, because I wa- rewatched the replays and read some of the feedback. Um, I think there was a bit of misconception from the community that this was like the pro league, you know, like the best of the best. You know, these kind of guys that run the 15s, run the 20s and throw their name in the hat. And, you know, there's like a big tournament, um, you know, maybe in the future. Who knows? Um, but right. I think there was kind of like, a, oh, my God, these guys like suck. It's like, well, <laughs> I, I think they're I think they're representative of the average WoW player. But I think everyone's just kind of expecting this craziness, you know, like pulling like rank 16s. Sure. And um, so, um, well, and and it was and it was um, not a it wasn't a huge prize pool at all. I mean, it was it was 20K, which actually for a first stab at trying to see if PVE can be an esport. I mean, that's not I guess that's not terrible, but. Uh, it ended up being, I think it was per winner of the five team. It was two K per, so it was ten exactly, K yeah. for the for the first place team, and then and then down from there. Um, so not necessarily a ton of money, no, either. But, so you know, but as a student, <laughs> anyway, sure, it's sure. a ton of money. <laughs> no, I mean that that's that's beer money. That's good. <laughs> it's not bad. Well, that's like one night's all. beer money. No, just oh, one night <laughs> uh, for you, maybe. Yeah, but uh, no, it's not, I mean, exactly. It's kind of like, I, I feel like a lot of it for, for Blizzard was kind of testing the waters, you know. Of course, mm-hmm. you know, there's tons of things that could be done to improve. And I'm sure Blizzard knows it. And I've talked to some of the guys, you know, kind of backstage while it was happening. And, you know, I, it's things like, well, I, they essentially took the UI from the, the raid races at BlizzCon, you know, um, 
like which I was part of in like 2013, 2014, I think it was. Um, so they took that same UI, which is not the most informative UI, right? And if you're if you're trying to kind of turn this into a a viewer sport viewer event, there's certain things that people just want to see that usually you're like, ah, go away if you're streaming, you know, or like some people don't show it, or oh my god, salute, why aren't you showing this when you're practicing like PTR? Um, but it, it's like things like damage meters, you know. Um, mm -hmm. are pretty important. Uh, people want to see kind of like what's going on with damage, you know, things like they didn't they didn't really show or tally the deaths very well for each team, so it was tough to tell, like, oh, how, how many times has each team died, you know, based on the five-second penalty of each. So there's definitely some UI improvement stuff they could do. But like mm -hmm. I said, I think this was very much a, a kind of, you know, they, they knew there was things that could have been improved, and it was very much a, a trial thing to see how the general sure. reception would be. Um, sure. Well, and and how do you th how do you think that that trial went? Do you think that we could see more of this in the future? Um, I think so. I mean, I was kind of talking to the guys, and I was like, "Well, what do you estimate the kind of viewership numbers to be?" And they're like, "Oh, well, you know, we're we're hoping somewhere in the fifteen to twenty k." And that's what it was. You know, it was about fifteen, sixteen, seventeen concurrent for most of it after kind of the initial get go. Um, mm -hmm. I think they could have, and I, I think they, they know it too, but I think the, and a lot of the feedback too was that it was not very well advertised. Um, there was a lot of people, I mean, it was just kind of, right. it had been going on for a month and a half, right? And it was yeah. just kind of like the day before there was this blue post being like, hey, <laughs> there's this like awesome thing and like Lauren Sluter hosting and everyone's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I have like yeah. literally never heard of this. So eventually right. people tuned in and you know, some people were like, oh, this is awesome. And then you get the folk who are like, la la la, PVP greater than PVE. And then like PVE guys are like PVE greater than PVP. Um, but there right. was like, once the event happened, I think overall the reception was actually quite good outside of the inevitable trolling, right? Um, it's <laughs> it's pretty solid. People are pretty happy with it. They like to see this kind of event, you know, suggestions for improvements here and there. That's fine. But I think, honestly, even for this first trial, they probably could have gotten a lot more out of it if they were doing some more heavier, at least decent advertising, you know, a week or two before. Sure. Probably. Sure. Had, yeah. Better it, it, it did. It did seem a little light. It seemed like they weren't necessarily throwing a lot of resources into um, the the event much at all. I mean, with a 20K prize pool, I mean, it's like that. Oh, we have a twenty thousand dollar budget. OK. Let's just throw it into the prize pool. And, yeah, exactly. You know, whatever. So, uh, but that's, but that's good. I mean, if, if that's something that they can build on and, and, and try to try to build up and see what happens. I mean, that would be, that'd be really good, especially for all the uh, PVE lovers out there. I know that yeah. there are a bunch. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could I could certainly see it being built into something. And, you know, there's always been this kind of like, ah, oh, make rating competitive, make rating. And rating is competitive in its own way, but it's really hard to turn rating into an eSport. Um, yeah. Because yeah. nobody wants to sit around watching six hours of wipes on a boss, you know. Um, and even, even Really? Though, no. No, I know. And <laughs> these dungeons just kind of have the right format, the right timing, and they kind of always already provide competition, you know. Obviously, it's not right. direct competition like PvP, which is why it's not PvP. It's kind of like PvEVP, you know. Um, mm -hmm. they're, both, they're both competing against environment, but against timer. So, um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's definitely something they can build on in the future. I think they want to. I ha unfortunately, I haven't heard any follow-up from them nor have i asked really yet about like hey what do you think he is doing it again um but sure. i wouldn't be shocked to see it grow i don't know if they'll do another series of co like college things or if they're going to be like okay let's go more major with this and invite some like you know more top players and teams but um it seemed pretty good from their perspective I, I think they were quite happy with it so good yeah and and the five player setup is a lot better you know from a caster standpoint too yeah only because then you don't have to worry about okay we have twenty Calling people 20 how are we, how how are we going to talk to about all these all these people in in this game so for sure uh, uh, but I also think just the five player format's a lot more accessible to people that want to compete as well uh, right. it's, it's more watchable it's you know easier not to miss but oh, actually that that was definitely one of the shortcomings five players regardless it was really hard like what we were casting what you guys saw right so. Uh -huh. It's not a very good indication of like, did they just bloodlust, you know, like what CD was used. So, you know how in arena format they have kind of have this overlay with major cooldowns of the players. And then you kind of know, um, you know, oh, the major's ice blocks on cooldown, stuff like that. I mean, half right. the time we're like, you know, I know I usually bloodlust on this first boss in the dungeon, but did they? I don't see like a sated debuff. <laughs> and then we'd be like looking at their hands and be like, their hands turned red. It's like, well, guess what? <laughs> like half the spells in this game make your hand turns red. So. 
Right. Um, it was a bit tough. So <laughs> hopefully that's something that they kind of work towards in the future. Just have kind of like an overlay being like, does this team have bloodlust and, you know, rallying cry or commanding shout it's called now, but you know, mm-hmm. um, no, gotcha. we need to, work but yeah, it was, it was a bit interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, hey, and uh, speaking of the mythic uh, uh, like raids and stuff like that, I just wanted to touch briefly with you on the mythic race uh, for this first little set, this preliminary uh, two raids that we that just finished. Congratulations, by the way, number two. Uh, yeah, that's, getting there. That's that's a pretty good feat. I mean, you guys well, are still. All right. You guys are. Oh, come on, it's all right. Well, when you have certain expectations, right, and they're not met. I get it. And I get disappointed it. with yourself. I mean, I hear I you, am, you know, not to sound like, oh my god, like how how could we not? But you know, I'm, that's kind of what the guild strives for, right? That's what a sure. lot of the people in the top three, four, five strive for. So there can only be one winner of of those, right? So it's always a bit of a disappointment if you don't get it. But right, there can only be one. Uh, only be one. <laughs> um, but it was a good showing for you guys, and and this was um, really the was this the first test of Serenity. Um, as as a guild i kind of because yeah i mean well obviously yeah it was the first time we ever because you you guys formed after hfc right right yeah so the forming was exactly during hfc farm so this was our first time like you know competitively racing in raid Mm -hmm. rather than just like you know clearing farm and afking for 14 months um right but uh (laughs) yeah so I, i like yeah it was it was good you know it's i think it's you know, it's disappointing, but it's a bit healthy that things went down the way they did because, you know, and especially the public and, it, you know, could get to your head a bit too. The public was like, oh, mm-hmm. Serenity is going to be untouched. They're going to be the best no matter what. Like nobody can ever come close to them. And then, you know, it was a bit of a reality check, right? Like there are amazing players out there. There's not literally 24 players or whatever that are the best in the world and will dominate. It just doesn't work that way, right? So there's right. lots of guilds and maybe they have better players. Maybe they have the same player. Maybe they have worse players, but it's about, you know, strategy and kind of synergy in the guild. That's a really big thing, right? And it's a, you know, a bit of a wake up call after Emerald Nightmare. And then, you know, we'll work to improve a bit and tov and then you know just sit down again and look at what what went down and what went wrong and how we can fix it because i mean everyone in the guild knows that we're like they personally and the guild as a whole is capable of attaining top spot but it's certainly not like a pushover you know like kind of the image was painted you know prior to legion coming out that it would be a pushover and we'd just stomp everything so it's mm-hmm. yeah I, I guess on the flip side it makes for a lot more fun from uh viewership perspective right because that's what people sure. want to see they want to see close races so and yeah, drama I mean, it's, and all that kind of stuff it's always weird when we talk about the mythic race to world first because uh you know a lot of it goes unseen and we're just like checking wow progress and and stuff like that and, yeah. and seeing what's going on and and trying to check out um you know whenever you guys are are actually streaming stuff during that time we try to check it out there and we try to it, it's just hard to get all of the news that you want right it's so tough, yeah but i mean with good reason right you don't want to you know, oh yeah yeah absolutely stuff. but that's yeah, you, you know, know <laughs> that's kind of kind of touching on what we were saying like that how they can never really turn this kind of world first race into an esport because as exciting as you guys think it is and there's some cool stuff right strat development you know breakthroughs good plays from players you know stuff like that but at the end of the mm-hmm. day there's a lot of like wiping and planning and afking and bathroom breaks and so it's really in terms of like a high paced viewer stuff it's not definitely not very entertaining to watch uh, outside of right. development. what would be entertaining to watch i think that people would like if this were to ever be a thing in the future it would be kind of like um i don't want to say documentary but kind of like a highlight reel you know what i mean hour or two hours long kind of highlighting everything how the strat came together some of the close wipes some of the good plays and then the kill you know that i think is something that people would like to see but not the not the like ninety percent of filler in the middle. <laughs> well, make it happen, man. Just make it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do a team right, documentary. Do a team documentary. It's uh, it'll all be sponsored, of course, and and you could just release it and and be good to go. So, what did you think about the mythic rating scene this time around? Um, I mean, I kind of threw myself uh, after all these years into a situation where um, I was with like-headed players that 
their goal is and was world first, right? Like mm-hmm. that's what we do. In midwinter, you know, there are amazing players, absolutely no hard feelings there. But the guild kind of got to a point where there are people, and not that many people, like myself, that were like, let's go, let's go, push harder, push harder, you know, let's go for world first, like US world world first, that'd be so crazy. And people just weren't feeling it or just didn't have the time. Um, so it was different being in an environment now where it's like you're not the one having to kind of you know, pull the string along and, and kind of a couple other people with you. And then there's resistance met. It's kind of like, guys, we're here to raid for world first. If you're not go to another guild, you know? Wow. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it was, it's cool. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. You're just with a group of people that share the same interests as you, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of comfortable zone, like anything in life. Right. Um, so it's nice. It's, it's intense. I mean, um, I think, <laughs> I think beyond, uh, you know, I think kind of the curveball here is that, uh, well, Ferdy as well, but not anymore. He's actually not rating the Serenity anymore. Um, no, nothing drama. Just, you know, it's time to retire. Sure. Um, I'm the only uh, North American player that does this. Um, so, you know, <laughs> what, what is normal to wake up at 10 a.m. and start raiding on raid days for the rest of the guild, I start at 4 a.m. Um, right. So it's. It's a bit different, but you know, I mean, nothing <laughs> it's, crazy. A little, it's a little bit different. It's a little weird, yeah. but you know, you got you get used to it. And, you know, Emerald Nightmare was a bit weird. Like, you didn't, I, you know, it was the first time kind of progression rating in at these hours. So, you know, it kind of like it was a bit tough to really know. Like, when should I go to bed? You know, what's what's enough? Especially because your brain in the evening, you're like, oh, and you know, you're like wired from your raid, and you look at the clock, you're like, ah, it's only seven o'clock. Like, let's keep. Let, let's let me sit here in theory craft about the fight we just did, you know? Right. Um, but really, you're like, I should probably get to bed. Otherwise, I'm going to sleep like two hours. Sure. Uh, but it was good. I mean, it was, it was intense. Uh, the environment was good. And it's just very, um, you know, I mean, yeah, the timing is one thing. And, you know, the, the, the preparation and intensity of the players is another. But I think what's what's really notable is um, how constructively i guess people kind of beat themselves up when when they screw up you know what i mean it's very like what happened oh i screwed up like you know my bad like you know the i cut the orb the wrong way it killed a bunch of people end of story it won't happen again let's go you know what i mean there's no there's no like witch hunt on what happened and somebody's shy to speak up and like oh my god or what it's very like we're here to get the job done players are good enough to know that like i'm better than this you know i screwed up end of story move on period yep go again it's, a, th- it's that, that mentality switch happens as soon as you start running mythic. It has to at some point. Right. I mean, it really right. when you start running mythic, you have to say, you know what? I am going to own all of my mistakes. I am going to try to learn from from them and I'm going to try to really make sure that I'm on point every single second because you have to. You just have to. I, I mean, you just have to. And it. Yeah, I don't know. It, it starts to, yeah, for various reasons, right? It starts to lead to, lead to tension. It, like, you know, people start to play worse if they're shy to say that they screwed up and whatever. And then the officers get mad trying to find who it was. And it's just, you know what I mean? I, I don't really understand why players really hot it in the first place. I mean, well, if you screw up, you screw up, right? You're, right? you're a better person for owning up to it, in my opinion. But I guess some people just maybe shy about it or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, nobody likes to admit that they screwed up. But at the same time... You know, if you if you don't admit to it, especially in that kind of a situation, you're just going to make your uh, raid leaders very upset because they have to right, hunt, right. because you have to hunt it down. Like you said, you have to hunt it down and you have to figure out what what happened, what went wrong. Boy, so. oh boy, are there some beautiful tools for that these days. <laughs> <laughs> what what kind of Between tools are you using for that stuff? Well, Warcraft logs, obviously, sure. is, is one of the first, but uh, one of the easiest, really, and most successful that I've been using for ages. And I, I people are always like, salute what add-ons do you recommend as a tank? I would very much recommend it is uh, Death Note. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but for any kind of raid leading, because it, it essentially, in the last X seconds, up to you, right, how much you want to set. But you don't usually need more than, like, 20, 30. Sure. Um, you can see every single event that happened to the person before they died. Like everything, every hot, every buff application and buff drop off, every I stood in volcanic, I didn't stand in volcanic. So, you know, right. right? And it's it's a constructive thing. So you open it up and you go, oh, well, there you go. You know, the the warrior didn't use shield block. End of story. He got hit for double the damage or something, you know? Yep. Um, and it's just easy to 
find out and call people out and stuff. But it's also a constructive tool, right? If you look at it and like the tank died, everyone's like, ah, the friggin' tank. We hate that guy. Yep. And then you open up the death log and he's like, well, oh, guess what? He actually didn't get healed literally for the past 15 seconds. Then you start turning your attention to the healer. Yep. Oh, man. And, I always hate it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't well, need any attention. I'm, I'm good over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great deflection tool that death note. I love it. <laughs> it is good. It is good. Uh so what was your what were your thoughts on uh tuning for uh this round? Uh well, I think Ian was super disappointing for starters. Um I you know, if if I kind of take a sip of the Kool-Aid and and you know kind of go to eye to eye with their idea that en was meant to be kind of an introductory raid mm -hmm. um and it wasn't meant to be that tough but then i think back to like high mall which is the same structure everything right it's pretty disappointing um i think some of the first bosses were like you know like ursak was supposed to be like butcher v2 right butcher was rough like he was rough in high mall right um and you know ursak was like oh no like everybody get as much gear as you can best end chance like ursak's gonna be a ruthless dps check and it was like killed in like four pulls you know yeah um so you know i think part of that was uh actually i'll touch on this in a second but yeah so i mean everything was like okay in en i thought ilganoth was good i thought i thought there was not the best but you know some kind of resemblance of a ramp up in difficulty towards the end uh -huh. and then you get to scenarios which was actually quite good like scenarios was pretty tough and then xavius man what happened <laughs> what a disappointment he literally died like we were like we we're on scenarios methods on scenarios and exorcist had killed it right and we're like oh there's you know like let's it's late let's you know a lot of these guys like from method and old method and now serenity and old rem that's now method you know a lot of these top raiders have this knowledge and mentality that when you gear up for this difficult what are the most difficult bosses right it's already so late you know you go have a nap you get refreshed and you come back right right and then, so we ended for the night. I, I, I think Method had ended an hour prior to us. And I'm sitting there and I, I was talking to my girlfriend at the time. And I just by chance happened to click refresh on my progress. And it was just like exhausted seven out of seven. I was like, what? Oh, man. I was like, that's got to be a typo or something. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And then the interview popped up and they're like, yeah, the boss just kind of died. Like nothing happened. Uh, <laughs> like, uh. Um but um, so, yeah, so I, I think it was just super disappointing tuning on that. But the real concern, I think, at the time for players that yeah, outside of like trolling, complaining, you know, mm -hmm. I think the real concern for players was more so um, not that they missed the numerical mark on Xavius, but I, I think a lot of the disappointment was really mechanically like it was the same fight. In fact, it was almost made a bit easier outside of like the controlling the dream, a bit of stuff in phase one. The rest of the fight was the same. There was no Cho'Gall secret face. There was no huge, crazy new mechanic. There was just kind of the same fight with a bit more control. The numbers were clearly not high enough. And that was the real disappointment, you know? Mm -hmm. So kind of, you know, you know, Warlords gets a lot of flack, but I think Warlords rating was really good. Like, I think it was really, really good. Most of it. Um so there's kind of all this concern that, you know, Warlords had a pretty good rating scene. And it's like, what's going on in Legion? They improved all these other systems, you know, Mythic Plus, all this great stuff. And, you know, so it kind of made people really skeptical. And it kind of took down that excited note a bit. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. And I think what, ha what happened really was Blizzard threw this raid into such a volatile environment with all these new elements of gear acquisition and power acquisition and randomization on these things that it was very, very hard to tune, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... Three weeks into the expansion, what do you tune for? Do you tune for um, do you tune for players running twenty four hours a day, getting eight ninety five Titan Forge procs and a legendary uh, and crazy AP, or do you not? Do you tune for one legendary because you can only wear one at the time, right? Do sure. you tune for one? Do you tune for none? Do you tune for eight sixty, eight seventy? So they had a really tough curveball thrown at yep. that. Where do they tune? And you know there are obviously the top players that just don't sleep <laughs> just go all day <laughs> right. mythic plus all day and you get a legendary you get two legendaries and uh, it was really hard to tune but i think as the you know and then the kind of analysis after that by a lot of people myself included was that well you know we'll see how the rest goes but it can hopefully only get easier from now on for them to tune right because actually this was before we knew tov even existed you know the idea was well by the time nighthold comes out you can kind of assume most people have at least two or three legendaries right mm -hmm. you can kind of assume that most people are farming the, the hell out of mythic plus and and ap you know you'll have at least 35 traits and all that kind of stuff so i think as the expansion goes on it's safer to for blizzard to assume a certain power level player level sure and and tune accordingly. Whereas Emerald Nightmare was just a complete 
like poop fest. Like they just curveball. <laughs> um, you know, some bosses are good, some bosses are bad. But I think regardless of them missing the mark, maybe as a whole with the gear tuning, the thing is they clearly had some kind of ramp up tuning and they completely missed the mark with Xavius, regardless, right? I mean, yeah. there's no scenario should be like 60 pulls harder than the end boss. It doesn't make any sense. Right. Um, come TOV, right? Everyone's kind of wearing their little tinfoil hats and <laughs> they're all skeptical. And, you know, there's those, uh, now that I've kind of, you know, seen the culture here in EU, there's kind of this joke now in EU where it's like, um, where everyone's kind of like, well, I want one of two things to happen now. I either want to wake up and a U.S. guild's killed everything, and everyone's like, blah, 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 blah. or we want to wake up and nobody's killed anything, right? We don't want right. like a kind of between. Right. So, of course, TOV comes out, you know, Limit gets in there, Midwinter, all those guys get in there. And, you know, it, it's kind of, I'll, I'll tell you, from, from a guy who played NA and you're like the first to get there, no matter what it releases now playing on EU and you're just like guilds are already in there progressing. And you're just kind of like, wow, these emissaries are so fun right now. I can't <laughs> access this. Ra- I can't access this right until tomorrow. Uh, you're just kind of refreshing about progress. And, you know, and like two, three hours in like Odin drops and we're like, you gotta be kidding me, man. Like what again? And then, you know, like five, six hours later, Gorm drops and we're like, oh, my yep. God, again, like, no way. Right. We're expecting Kelly to be dead within the next, like, four hours. And she doesn't die. We're like, oh, OK, you know, we'll see what's up. So we get in there the next day and, you know, we kill those two bosses. Yep. And Ellie was no joke. Like, no, <laughs> was, that, that was the report was, that I heard was that she was just killing people left and right. She is rough. It, it, I think the, the coolest thing about it was, look, she's obviously killable, right? It's like she's not impossible. You know, phase one Archimond uh, Mythic and HFC where Method went in and it was like you, you literally couldn't get outside of phase one. Mm-hmm. They had to, you know, Shadowfell burst and all this other stuff. And, and I think the fire from the Doom Fire. Um, you know, it was like it was the, the best thing about it all, to me at least. Um, yeah, you know, the rating's fun and it's great. And I love the competitive, like the, the, it was the reassurance that Blizzard still knows how to do it despite right. all these kind of doubts in the community and, and curveballs with RNG and player gear and legendaries. I mean, these are guilds that got to this fight, Serenity, Method, Exorcist from scratch. These are guilds that got to this fight after farming 250 plus Moth Soul instances just to get that rank 35 trait. So all the DPS had 5% more damage and all the tanks had 10% more armor and I think 5% more healing for healer or something like that. You know, and everybody went in there and we're like, oh, there's no way they tuned for this, right? Like, we're just going to stomp it. And they did. They tuned for <laughs> two legendaries. They tuned for most or some, at least some half the guild players having 35 traits and they tuned for some of the best players in the world getting in there. And it just gave a lot of faith back that, you know, they know what's up. You know, they know that there's difficulties. They know this is meant to be a very hard boss. They know what guilds are up to now, right? They react quickly to people just running instances nonstop. So I think it was really good. And it it kind of, not fully eliminated, I'm not going to lie, but it it kind of battled a lot of that skeptical or skepticism that I had after um, Emerald Nightmare being like, oh my God, is this what rating's going to be like now? Everyone's going to quit, right? Nobody wants to work for a month for 24 hours of progress. (laughs) <laughs> um, it, it gave that kind of faith that, Hey man, they can, they can make a pretty badass boss again. And this is yeah. only a three boss dungeon. You yeah. Know? Yep. So it is, it was kind of nice to see that, uh, see Helia last for a while anyway. And, yeah. um, and all the reports sounded really great. So, so that's cool. Uh, so we were kind of talking about it a little bit as far as Blizzard's end. How do they how do they scale for all the th- different things going on? Legendaries and artifact weapons and and all that kind of stuff. What has been your? I mean, from a player perspective, especially at the top level, um, what do you think about all of the different things, especially artifact power and gearing and all that kind of stuff? How did you? I mean, this is different from Warlords, right? by a lot you're having to do a right. lot of questing and and all that kind of stuff on top of everything else i mean the the top end rating scene which is already pretty ludicrous in warlords has been like uh like increased substantially yeah. um the amount of work you need to do to be competitive right is crazy 
right? It's not just let's do five, six alts and do split clears when heroics come out and make sure they're decently gear. And we'll rotate them once a week for, you know, the raid and they can get a much a bit of gear from the first easy bosses. Then we'll bring them. You know, that formula is kind of, yeah, it still exists, but it's kind of gone out the window because, you know, before you were kind of in some ways, yeah, you know, you were essentially restricted, like in Warlords, to the best gear in the game from raiding, really, right? Sure. For PvE. It's just the way it was. And that was restricted to a once a week thing. You can only kill this boss on this difficulty once a week, period, on this character. So choose who you want to bring in if we're only doing two clears for the week or three, or whatever, and that's it. And now, the biggest thing is there's an unlimited potential in getting gear. There's no more restriction. There's no more like, okay, guys, we've done our three clears for the week. See you next week for HFC, whatever. Like there's just – there's no limit. You mm-hmm. can literally go and do M plus or emissaries or whatever you want to do all day, every day, and there could always be an upgrade or legendary, whatever. So it's just gotten to a point where – I mean there's no plan for it, right? The, all the top guilds are just kind of testing the water. You don't really know what to expect, right? Right. Um, I mean, going into TOV, it was funny. Like, I, I don't think, you know, most of the guilds didn't really, like, you know, people on top guilds know each other, right? Obviously, like, mm-hmm. you know, we know we know of each other. We kind of keep tabs on each other, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, everyone was kind of like, nobody really knew what to expect from TOV. It's like, well, for TOV, you know, typical preparation usually would have been two, three clears of Mythic Emerald Nightmare and then hope for the best, right? Mm-hmm. But now it's kind of like, well, what are the other guilds doing? Are they are they grinding for artifact power? Or, you know, <laughs> right. kind of like right. peeking around armories, and it's like, wait a minute. Hey this guys, what's got the like, plan? What are we doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like ah, this this guild got like three people, thirty five traits. They're like, that's it. Everybody needs to farm thirty five traits. And you know, as soon as kind of that that word gets out there, then every guild's grinding it. You know, so there's just people don't really know. And the thing is, top end rating isn't um, a Blizzard sanctioned or blizzard controlled or whatever thing it's a completely fan-based thing right sure so there can't be any complaints about it like oh the the amount of investment you're not getting paid for it you're not you do it because you want but now it's it's always been touch and feel with the community and as the expansions have gone on and the years have gone on it's just gotten more and more hardcore right uh you know initially it was just one team and then you add an alt in there a main alt and now now you know last two expansions we're talking like five alts right and now you have five alts plus unlimited (laughs) resources for all of them so um, it just gets a bit crazy, um, yeah. but really the gains are kind of there. I think they'll settle down a bit more. I think there's some like really big milestones, you know, and I think the later we go into expansion, yeah, there'll always be some milestones the later. Cause you know, they're already coming out with another set of miners for your artifact things <laughs> like seven, two and stuff like that. But I think as the expansion goes on, things will kind of settle in a bit more, you know, artifact acquisition will, uh, power acquisition will get much faster and right. just kind of pass like with my other five tunes right now. Honestly, just kind of passively doing like my emissaries every day and then, you know, my my 12 plus for the week and all that kind of stuff. They're almost all at 35 now. You know, wow. I know not everyone's like that, but I'm just saying, you know, I know I play a lot, but I'm not. Th- there's a difference between me logging on, doing my casual stuff every day rather than grinding 250 moth souls on each character. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, so it'll get it'll get a bit easier as time goes on. But I mean, you know, there's not. I mean, the it's it's crazy. I, yeah, I don't um, know it, how you guys do it, because it, seriously, when you're talking about especially five alts, I mean, yikes, that is I, I was struggling with one, just one guy just out there just doing my thing. And, you know, I'm still not anywhere close to I still can't touch what you guys have got going on with with all five characters or whatever. So it's it's a lot of work. And yeah, I mean, it's you know there are some helps in some way like artifact knowledge you know in 715 you can right. kind of buy artifact knowledge up to 10 or 15 or whatever it was mm-hmm. um you know so there's some things that'll help with the alt play but it is pretty grueling but it, it kind of i think what players are starting to realize not just at the top level but in general i've been kind of saying it on my stream too and i kind of demonstrated that myself in tov some people did not just myself but you, you now that there's no you know because you were kind of restricted by rating before in terms of selecting a main for the tier or whatever, you know, uh-huh. uh, you're kind of restricted because you wouldn't want to bring like, you know, I wouldn't go to HFC and be like, OK, guys, well, I'm going to play my druid and my paladin and my warrior. Right. Let's just <laughs> kind of like filter all the gear towards those, because um, not only do you take a bunch of gear away from people, but then you end up with a player that has the third a third of the power potential it could have before. Right. Because right? you're splitting. So you kind of have to decide, you know, there's tier gear, there's important trinkets. You kind of have to decide who to bring and go for it. But now, now you can get 
an uncapped gear potential outside of the raid. So you're actually left in a situation where if you put in the time, if you know how to play the classes, if whatever, you could actually just bring like I don't have a main that I bring anymore. I have an army of six tanks I can bring, you know, wow. that are all have the gear. All have the whatever. Yeah, you know, it'll change a bit in Nighthold. Yeah, there's some tier gear, but tier gear is not always the best for everyone. You know, you can still get competitive eye level. You can still get amazing trinkets from, like, Karazhan. You know, everyone wants that Aran's ruby. Um, and so it's just kind of the game is changing the top end scene in ways that outside of just farming, just competitive mm-hmm. ways. And, and, and it sounds, I mean, it sounds actually kind of cool n- now. But working up to th- to that point has got <laughs> got to be a little bit of a nightmare. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, do what you love. Bro. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do what you love. Uh, let's talk seven one five real quick. Because have you? I'm guessing you've been on the PTR all over it and checking out what's going on. It kind of, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, what do you think about all the class changes? I know that that was kind of like this big thing that's going on currently in the PTR, and I know that they're not done yet with, uh, with all the changes and stuff like that going on. And and we had you know Watcher do a video with Lore, a little Q and A thing where he kind of got into the mechanics stuff about what's going on with uh, all the different classes, or at least some of them. Um, what what's your impression of what's going to be? coming down in 715 um i mean anything specifically or uh no i mean just in general i mean do, are you expecting big changes out of 715 from a class perspective or are we just because we're talking I about mean, a second any... we're talking about a secondary stat squish we're talking about you know kind of some mechanic changes for for some classes and it's kind of a confusing mess for somebody you know that's just yeah. looking at it for the first time yeah i mean i think that you know, because of the artifact power system and the kind of put all your eggs in one basket, especially early on to the expansion that you experience, I think they, they kind of put themselves in a very tricky situation um, for the rest of the expansion, especially, mm-hmm. you know, the earlier parts of the expansion, because there's a huge, huge player investment that goes into selecting your class and spec now, right? Uh-huh. So. To have somebody like, I don't know, you know, I love Mistweavers, you love a Mistweaver, and put all this artifact power into it, it's so fun, I love it. And then, you know, <laughs> they turn around and go, well, Mistweavers are getting nerfed, right? It's, yeah. it's very, very dissatisfying. And, you know, this is even a bigger concern for DPS that have multiple specs, you know. The Fire Mage, Arcane Mage thing is is most notable, uh, one of the more notable ones recently, at least. Right, Everybody, Fire is OP, Fire is the way to go all this time, and all of a sudden, Fire is kind of getting pooped on in 715, and Arcane's getting some nice buffs, you know? So all of a sudden, it's like, ah, oh, all this time I spent on fire? Like, how could they do this? Um, I think their goal is always to kind of buff the weaker and have everything kind of be as balanced as possible. Sure. But I think sometimes, I mean, like, anybody that expects things to be balanced in this game is out to lunch, and it'll never happen, ever, unless well, they completely homogenize everything. We are, There's no we, way. We are at... The- uh, potentially one of the closest times in in the history of WoW where we could be as ba- not necessarily not necessarily balanced uh, DPS wise or whatever, but just balanced between all the different specs because now they're all broken out and now we all have uh, these different spec only spells. So you'd right. think that they'd be able to go in there to to each spec and just like play with numbers. And come up with some kind of magic solution where it may not be perfectly balanced, but it would be at least good enough so that you could play any spec that you wanted to. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the dream, right? But the but reality at, at is... Least at, at least at a casual level. I'm not going to say that at, you know, oh. a Mythic Raid, you know, world first sure. type of thing, you're going to go in there with, you know, all three different specs of mages. No, it's probably not going to be the case. No, no, I, I agree with you. But even then, I mean, there's some... I think even if you're not like a top player or something like that, it doesn't matter because I think what happens is the community starts to form. And of course, it's no one but the community's fault, but well, not necessarily, <laughs> but you know, it's some of the community's fault. You sure. know, they start to form ideas of, you know, word of mouth of, oh, this class sucks. You know, like for the longest time, people are like Red Paladins, what a joke. Red Paladins suck, blah, 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 blah. And Red Paladins are like one of the best DPS right now. I mean, they're crazy. Um, you know, so you kind of get word of mouth. And then even from, uh, you know, a more casual perspective. You probably have people running around in dungeons, you know, playing the spec that they like playing. 
playing warlocks and stuff. You know, I actually can't tell you how many times in my stream I've seen people come in complaining that groups will not take them. Like just we're talking like a regular yeah. mythic groups will not take them because they're a warlock or because they're a brewmaster monk or something. Right. You know, classes that I've seen perform very well in different situations, but the communities now put it in their head that they suck and like they're you literally cannot complete content with them. So, sure. um so it's a you know a note of concern, but I mean, there's certainly there's just too many like variable situations in PVE mm -hmm. that it's impossible to balance everything. And I think, for instance, Ellie Shaman are a good ex example. Ellie Shaman are really good for AOE, like quite good actually. They're awesome. Um, you know, they're awesome. But single target, no, you know, maybe not the best option. <laughs> no. Maybe not the best option, right? So for something like Emerald Nightmare, which is almost solely single target, maybe a bit of cleave here and there, you know, right. Um, Ellie Shaman really weren't very favorable. But, you know, you run around Mythic Plus with them, they're actually quite good. And they have good, you know, utility and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's it's tough to say. But, yeah, I think that's the dream. So I think when Blizzard kind of assesses these situations, you know, they're going to get stuff wrong. And I think the times that they need to nerf something, which is like a super no-no as far as the community is concerned now because of this artifact power investment, mm -hmm. is because there's something that's such a crazy outlier that it kind of needs to happen. That, yeah, they want to play like that buff game, you know, like let's buff, let's fix, let's buff classes, let's reassess talents and stuff like that so that they kind of reach what is perceived as the stronger spec, you know, mm -hmm. or the stronger class. But sometimes there's a, such a heavy outlier that if everything was buffed up to that value, I mean, they'd have to like buff bosses and, you know, like the, the game would just become easier as a whole. So, I mean, there's just some classes, um, you know, I can't, outside of what I see with DPS and healers, um, and what I'm told, right, I don't really play those very much, so I can't be like, in my professional healing experience. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, but I see things like, you know, Shaman and for raiding are always, like, you know, loved so much, and Paladins are crazy right now for for healing and damage output, Holy Paladins, that is. Um, and, you know, for tanking, you know, something near and dear to my heart. I mean, Bears. Bears are just, you know, you know, can you get content done with every other tank? Absolutely. Some of the Mythic Plus dungeons, uh, well, the high-end folk that we were talking about, you know, ran a Blood DK, which most people will be like, really? Who runs a DK in 2016? Um, so you can, you can get, you know, a player that's good enough can get the job done with anything. You know, there's no, I would I would say there's literally no class and spec in this game right now that will actually, you know, you know stop your raid so hard that you can't complete content. I mean, that's just ridiculous, right? Sure. Um, but there are outliers that are just, I mean, you know, bears. Bears are crazy for tanks right now, right? There, mm -hmm. There's no risk. There's uh, very little risk. You know, there's very little punishment for messing up. They, they can do everything. They can counter everything. So there's this, again, you know, perception in the community, but it's true that they're just so good. They're so strong. Why would you not run a bear? There's a reason all the top end guilds ran at least one bear for hell yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so Blizzard kind of has to, at some point, step in, you know what I mean, as fickle as it is, and be like, look, man, this is just too much, right? <laughs> right. This this class is, this class respect is just too strong. Like, it's got to happen. Right. right. There's uh, 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 surrender to madness, right? Is another one with shadow priest. Oh yeah, that was a big one. one. That was a big. That's one. that's a, that's a juicy topic at all times, you know. So yep. it's just, I I I actually I don't play shadow priest. Obviously, I played it like a bit on beta, and it was fun to me and whatever. But I appreciate a design that allows for, you know, a a basic you know casual player to, to have fun with it, to be successful with it at their own pace and whatever. But also has that kind of skill ceiling that's so big that the that the good player can really take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think they're on par with that, but I think for their comfort level, Shadow Priests are maybe just a bit too far over the top. Just uh, that good player a bit. Is, just yeah, you know, you see with Xavier, so they're doing a million DPS. And right on. The other guys are doing 700K, but... Yeah. But yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know. I, I honestly, this is not, you know... People that are were like, oh, let's just get 715 done with, like, oh, you know, let me just destroy my class. I never want to play this again. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I mean, they said it at BlizzCon, I think it's their design philosophy now that these kind of 0.5 patches yep. are patches that they're going to use to reassess and rebalance. So, but the game's always been like this, right? With rebalancing, people get pissed at nerfs, people love buffs, but I think the stakes are just higher than they've ever been now in terms of player investment. That right. It's a lot yeah, more. Yeah, it is. It is about the investment in that artifact weapon and and all that kind of stuff. As long as as long as they're uh, careful with that, then I think they'll that it should be okay. I'm I'm just hoping that when it finally comes to live, that it won't like because we're talking about these secondary stat nerfs. Um, that it's going to be kind of 
kind of weird for some folks. And I know that there was some outrage and some some like, well, crit is such a big thing. And uh, Ian, he addressed some of that in the video. So hopefully we'll be able to kind of check it out when it comes live and it won't be that big of a deal. Yeah, I, I think some of the irritation is really just outside of artifact power is is like, how could you not see this happening? You right. I mean, I think I think that's and, you know, that goes for like the raid tuning and everything. And everyone yep. kind of just kinda sometimes questions their internal testing. Like, what are you doing? Like, how did you not know this was going to scale out of hand? Right. You know, so I think I, I think that's kind of the irritation. It's like now, guess what? I'm accustomed to 30 percent haste. All of a sudden, I only have like 26 or whatever, you know, so it's, right. it's, it's fair frustration. Right. I mean, I don't yeah. know, I well, and, and you want to hit those break, po- the, you know, like your own break point. Right. I yeah. know that there aren't break points anymore, but there are. At the same time, just for player style and stuff like that. So, uh, yes, fun stuff. I know that I know that you have to uh, get onto your stream here pretty soon. So I I think um, I think I'll let you go. But at some point, but um, it was fun running into you at BlizzCon. Always is. Yeah, I had a blast, man. Yeah, I don't remember seeing. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) You bought me a couple of drinks. I thought you were trying to take advantage of me. Seriously. Well, (laughs) it's, it's all preparation for 2017. Oh, boy. Look out. (laughs) uh where can people find you because you're uh on twitch and all the places right yep yep so you can find me on twitch twitch twitch.tv slash sloot bag stream six days a week 10 to 12 hours a day i don't know how you i don't know how you do that man you know what once you start you know people are it's actually funny i i was really sick yesterday and i actually took the day off streaming when i shouldn't uh, when i usually don't Uh um and I was, I had to, you know, I can't fall behind on emissaries and stuff. So I, I was doing the same stuff that I would be doing on stream. Yeah. And I was like, if, I was like, if I didn't stream this for a living, I'd honestly like kill myself. Uh, there's no way. I was like sitting there, like looking at like the hippogriff flapping its wings rapidly on the flight path. I was like, oh my God, because all this downtime, I just turned to the stream and I chat with people. Sure. And it just kind of, it, it turns into like a, oh my God, I'd have to play 10 to 12 hours a day to keep up with top and rating to well, like, wow, it's already been 10 hours. Well, like, and you have, and you have a, you have a uh, large enough group in your, in your chat room all the time that it's like, you're bringing along with you, you know, a few hundred friends all the time. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, so. so it's it's nice, yeah. So the the I don't know how you do it, it really turns into like you don't even notice it kind of thing, you know, if you do what you like. Um Yeah, but that but, just that just uh, sounds like a long, long time to be uh I, well I mean it is. It is right? <laughs> well sure it is, but you know, hey, when you're doing it, yeah, uh, it that's what yeah. I call full time streaming, man. That's awesome. That is, that is full time streaming. Oh yeah. yeah. And then um also on Twitter, handle at sleep bag. All right. Cool man. Well, I will let you go enjoy your day and your cold weather in uh, in blustery Canada. Uh, I'm gonna like I don't know. pull the blinds down so I don't have to look outside anymore. <laughs> like, I know that's why that's why my, that's so why my studio stuff. doesn't have windows. It's so that I won't get depressed. <laughs> oh, no, you don't understand. Like overnight, like 24 hours ago, yeah, there wasn't a drop of snow on the ground. I know, and now it's just like the entire it's like white everywhere. I know. I think we got uh, like four inches in Minneapolis uh, a couple of days ago, and so it's it was the nice fluffy stuff at least. But then the cold yeah, is coming. That turns into. Yeah, but that turns into the nasty black stuff later and the brown and the yellow. Yeah. And like the side of the road. Uh, yeah, it makes for a tasty snack, I suppose. But <laughs> yes. whatever you want to do, Pat, whatever you want. <laughs> well, I probably won't do that, but uh, but there we go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Uh, and I, I guess we'll catch your stream. And happy holidays. You as well. It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me back. Yep. Always good to chat with you. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, happy holidays to you and everybody else. And I will see you uh, soon. All right. Thanks, man. So that's it. That is the wonderful uh, salute from Serenity. Great interview. Always nice to talk to him. And just as a quick update to our quick update at the beginning of the show, I actually have more information now uh, because the Overwatch thing has been released. It's Maze Snowball Offensive, a 6v6 single elimination brawl and should prove to be a lot of fun, uh, just like that interview was. Right? Am I right? That was great. Uh, So that's it for this week's show uh, of Convert to Ray. Thank you so much for listening, taking us with you. Oh, hey, and if you can... Uh, we're trying to uh, get to know you guys a little bit better. We'd love to do that. Go over to convert to raid.com slash survey. 
Uh, fill out a little quick survey for us if you can, and we thank you for your time. Now, I do want to take this time to wish you and yours the happiest of holidays, a great winter veil. Uh, however you are celebrating the rest of 2016, may it be the best for you guys, and we will talk to you very, very soon. For all the guys that convert to Raid, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.